Hi there, I'm Hannah and welcome to Real Yoga. Today, Baloo and I are going to be helping you improve your drive swing in this Yoga for Golfers video. So not only will this really improve your drive, but actually all aspects of your golfing game. In today's practice, I encourage you to bring two books that are about the same size to the mat. I'm using my yoga blocks today, and you can see these are quite thick. So if there's something around the place that's around this thickness that you can use on your mat, bring that today. If you don't have anything like that, it's no problem. You can totally do this prop free. It will just be a nice little extra, let's call it a handicap <laughs> for your practice today. So when you're ready, get your stretchy pants and I'll meet you on the mat. Okay, so we're going to start on our knees. If you have sensitive knees or bony ankles or anything sort of uncomfortable here, a blanket is a really nice prop to use as well to just soften uh, the space underneath your legs. So grab that if you need it. And if you have your big thick books or your yoga blocks, then take them out in front of you about shoulder width distance apart. Okay, and now take your knees nice and wide. And we're going to bring our elbows down to the blocks and bring the hands together. So settle in here, maybe you need to move your belly out the way or wiggle your hips a little so that your hips feel heavy. And of course you can do this without the blocks and simply just put your elbows on the floor. And then from here, take a deep breath in. Think about lengthening your heart forward. Keep that as you exhale. Let your chest melt down as you bring your head towards the floor. And here you can start to move your hands behind your skull, bringing your thumbs to the nape of your neck. So for some, the forehead will touch and for others it won't and it doesn't matter. Just find a quote unquote comfortable version of this pose for yourself. And here we're starting like this to gently open up the shoulders. So if you think about your golf swing, of course, all of our parts work together at all times. So any kind of body movement, stretching and strengthening is good for any part of your game. But today we'll specifically target a few areas and one of those being the shoulders. So to get that club way back behind you so you can take a big long shot and maybe aim for a hole in one or at least par, then you want to have your shoulders nice and open to be able to get your arms way back behind you. So notice here if you're gripping or holding onto any tension and see if you can work to breathe deeply and help to release any areas of tightness, knowing that the floor has got you, your practice has got you, you're not going to go anywhere, you're not going to fall. So just breathe and feel your chest melting towards the earth. Take another deep inhale breath. And as you exhale, can you draw your armpits closer to the ground? Nice. We'll stay here for two more breaths. And one more breath. Very gently, be mindful as you come out of this. First, send your hands forward and then press down into your elbows to lift your gaze and then climb back up into a kneeling position. You can move your blocks out of the way or your books, whatever you're using. And then we'll meet together on all fours in what we call in yoga, a tabletop position. So take your hands a little bit wider than shoulder width distance apart and send your knees a little wide, but not maybe as wide as when we started. Plant down through the tops of the feet, and here we're going to just get a little bit of movement happening in the wrists. So spread your fingers really wide so you've got a strong foundation. And here, find a slight engagement of the belly. So just don't let your uh, beer gut hang down. <laughs> Instead, feel as though you can take a little bit of the curve out of your low back. Keep that, and as you inhale, start to shift the weight forward so your shoulders might move over your fingerprints. And then as you exhale, shift your hips back to your heels. 
Nice. Inhale again, press into the hands and shift the weight forward. Keep that belly very slightly engaged and then exhale, send the hips back. Again, a few times, moving with your own breath. And what we wanna avoid here is the wrists and the palms of the hands lifting up off the floor. So only go as far as it works for you, keeping all parts of your hands grounded down into the earth. Grip into your fingerprints, start to really activate through the hands as you breathe in and come forward. And exhale, shifting back. Nice. On your next inhale, come back to center. And then from here, rotate your fingers to the outer edges of your mat. So we've got these kind of little duck feet situation with your hands. All right, beautiful. Again, find that very slight engagement of the belly. So this isn't this crazy, you know, rip hard abs. It's just like a 20% engagement. And this time as you inhale, shift forward, not letting any parts of your hands lift off the Floor, we're going to swing the hips over to the right and then exhale send the hips back to the heels as we swing them to the left and forward again inhaling as you come forward exhale move the circle back and around to the left and that's that's the little that's the choreography today shall we say inhaling to come forward and exhaling to go back Again, really make a point to grip into your fingers so that your entire hand stays planted on the floor. We're just getting this movement now in the wrists. Change the direction of your circles, inhaling still to come forward, still that activation in the belly. Good morning, Lulu. Okay, ciao, bye. <laughs> Couple more rounds here. Lulu's not into golf unless uh, it involves the buggy. He's a bit of a lazy dog. <laughs> and then slowly bring yourself back to center. All right, let's come off of the wrist for just a second. You can give them a little bit of a shake. And we'll do one more exercise on the wrist before we move on to another body part. All right, so come back onto your four point kneeling and take the right hand, lift it up and flip it behind you so that your fingers now point towards your knees. Keep the fingers spread really wide here and push them out away from you with your left hand. Nice, again, find that slight activation of the belly. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, curl your fingers in towards your palm. Looks a little bit like a little gorilla hand, no? Inhale, open the fingers wide, and then exhale, curl them in. Two more like that, inhale, open, and exhale, curl figuring out that we are very connected to the apes. Inhale, open, and exhale, curl it in. Nice. Inhale, open, and imagine the back of your hand is sticky as you slowly peel the hand away from the floor and now come up onto your fingerprints. Nice. And then squeeze the space in between each finger up into the palm of your hand. Feel that activate your forearm. Keep squeezing like you want to suck energy up from your mat into the palm of your hand for one more inhale. And then exhale, gently fan your fingers back down to the floor and we'll go to the other side. So flip the left hand, pointing the fingers towards your knee. Take an inhale with the, with the fingers spread really wide. And as you exhale, curl the fingers in, find that little monkey hand. Inhale, open. Exhale, curl them in. And again, two more inhale, open. Exhale, curl. Have you forgotten about your belly? Inhale, open. Exhale, curl it in. Nice. Inhale, open. Again, find that sticky hand as you peel your left hand away. Flip onto your fingerprints and then squeeze them energetically towards one another as you lift up through the palm of the hand and feel the forearms start to activate here. Beautiful. One more breath in. And then exhale, release the hand down. Perfect. Okay, so from the same position, we're going to inhale and start to reach the right arm up to the sky, starting to find the space and opening in the upper back body. And if you feel really tight here, like there's no way ever that your hand's going to the sky, it's no problem that it's 90%. Keep trying to rotate the chest open just as much as feels good for you. Take one more breath in here. And as you exhale, thread the right arm underneath the left, let it hover and dip your right shoulder down. And then press into the left hand, inhale, reach the right arm back up. 
Exhale, belly draws in as you send your right arm underneath your left. One more like that. Inhale, reach it up. And exhale, thread your right arm underneath your left. This time, come to rest on the outside of your right shoulder and your right ear. And now press up onto your left fingerprints. Find those little spidey hands from before to find even more rotation in the upper back body. Nice. You're welcome to stay exactly like this. Or to add on here, you can tuck the left toes underneath you and stretch your left, left leg back, lifting the knee away from the floor. You might lose a little bit of your balance here, no problem. And you can stay just like this, working on this core activation, also very vital with our gulping practice. And if you want to test that core activation even more, you can press into your left hand, the whole hand this time, and float the left foot away from the mat. Nice. Push down into the top of the right foot, press into the earth again, draw the belly in to find stability. And then final option if you want it, and trust me, this is going to get tricky, you can start to bend the left knee and see if you can take the left hand and reach for the left foot. Starting to add a stretch in the quad, as well as a twist, as well as core activation and a balance. And if you fall over, this is also a really great lesson that not to take life so seriously. On the yoga mat, on the golf course, always. <laughs> One more breath here. And then very gently release. Press your left hand into the floor, press your left toes down. You can drop the left knee and then inhale, reach the right arm all the way back up to the clouds and exhale, bring it down. How'd you go? <laughs> all right, let's play that game on the other side, shall we? Inhale, left arm lifts up. Find space here, start to rotate your chest open. You might notice that it's easier to twist in one direction than the other, and that's super normal. Take another inhale as you reach your fingertips up, and then exhale, thread your left arm underneath your right, let the shoulder hover. Inhale again to reach it all the way up to the sky. Exhale, thread your left arm through, let it hover as you dip your shoulder down. Last one, inhale, left arm reaches up. And exhale, thread the left arm under the right. This time, land on the side of your head, the outside of your left shoulder, and pop your right fingerprints up. Nice. Press into your fingers to rotate the chest even more. And without all that other stuff we just did, this is already such a great pose. So we're getting this really important twist in the upper back body, which you all know is important for your golf swing. So you can stay just here. If you want to add on, starting to work on the core a little more, then tuck the right toes underneath you, lift the right knee and stretch the leg back. Nice. You might notice the weight shift. Feel what it does to engage your belly muscles. It might help you feel more stable in this position. And you can stay right here. If you want the balance, press into the full hand, right hand. So let that be your foundation as you float your right foot off of the mat. All right, again, here is also a place where you can fall over, I've been there many times, or if you want it, you wanna add that quad stretch as well, start to bend the right knee, find your balance as you take your right hand and grab for your right foot, starting to get a quad stretch as well, drawing the foot towards your butt, wobbling, wobbles is fine, that's all your muscles contracting and working, it means we're working our rock hard abs, yeah? <laughs> One more breath in. And then exhale, gently release everything. Take your hand back to the floor. Take your right toes down. Drop the right knee. Press into the right hand as you inhale. Reach the left arm to the sky. Thank God that's over. And then exhale to come back to your four-point kneeling. Nice. Good work, everybody. All right, again, if you fell down, it's a good lesson to, you know, accept your failures and maybe have a little goal in mind that we'll try not to fall off of our mats next time. Okay, let's again start to work into the shoulders here. So as you inhale, feel as though you wanna drop your chest directly down to the floor. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, and then from here, start to curl your butt up to the sky, lift your chin and look up. 
And then as you exhale, press into the floor, start to round your spine, bring your chin towards your chest, and now curl your butt down towards the backs of your knees. Again, inhale, drop your chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together, start to lift your butt, lift your chin. And then exhale, press into the floor, round your spine, chin to chest, tailbone to the backs of your knees. One more like that, inhale, drop the heart, find this nice stretch to the whole front side of your body. And then exhale, find this same stretch in the back plane of your body. Nice. All right, inhale, come back to center. Find that tabletop with that slightly activated belly here. And then we're gonna take the right leg straight back behind us. You can float the foot off of the floor and then step the foot forward next to your right thumb. Now, depending on your body proportions and how flexible your arc you are, this might be another place for these books or blocks to come in handy to bring, let your arms get a little longer and bring the floor up to you if it's way too much in the hips. But the hip flexors is the part of the body that we're trying to target here. So from your position in this lunge, with whether you have blocks or not, think about rolling your shoulders back behind you as you reach your heart forward. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, can you sink your pelvis down? You wanna to start to feel a stretch across the front of the left hip. And if you think about your golf swing, as you're twisting, this, uh, the leg that is closest to, I guess, the fairway, there we go, I was like, feel, ooh. <laughs> the leg that's closest to the fairway gets a really big stretch as you swing the club behind you. So if these muscles are tight, you're not gonna get as much momentum in your swing. And to be honest, these muscles are tight for a lot of people, so this might be really intense, and I'm sorry if it is. We're gonna take one more breath in here, and one more breath out. Right, our next inhale, reach your arms all the way up to the sky, and then notice how it feels to add a little additional weight to the same stretch. So let your hips sink down, squeeze your thighs together gently, just so you're not dumping it out through your low back here. One more breath in. Nice, and then exhale, take your hands back down. You can leave the blocks there or you can get rid of them, it's fine. And then plant the hands. We're gonna swing this right leg straight back behind us again. You can float the foot away from the floor and then shift the left foot off to the left Start to rotate your chest open, reaching the right arm to the sky. And here we are in a side plank variation. So again, we're finding this activation through the core. So at the same time, flex your toes, really kick through that floating heel as you reach your fingers up to the sky. Nice, and you can stay just like this. Or again, to get a little more stretch in your quad, take your hand first behind your skull, and now bend your knee and kick your foot back behind you. Start to lean your head back into your hand, and now keep kicking that foot, opening through your chest. Beautiful. Working through our back, back muscles here, and now really press into your grounded hand, your left hand. Keep kicking that foot back behind you, and if you like, you can take the right hand and reach for the top of the right foot. Flex your toes as you kick your foot into your hand and open your chest even more. You can take your gaze wherever it feels good for you. No need to, you know, look at the sky. It's a little more grounding sometimes to look straight down at the floor. Right here for one more inhale. And then exhale, take your time to release this. See if you can use your strong core to come all the way out. Bring both knees back down, tuck your toes, and then press into your hands, keep your knees bent as you lift your hips up high for a version of downward facing dog. So feel free to pedal out your legs here a little, twist and turning through your hips. Give your head and your neck a little shake. Remember, your knees can be really bent here. We want the most interesting thing about this shape to be our spine being super long. So keep rolling your golf booty up to the sky for one more inhale. And then as you exhale, slowly drop your knees all the way back down and we'll play that game on the other side. So now kick your left leg way back behind you. Beautiful. And then again, engage the core to send the knee forward and step 
your left foot next to your left thumb. Okay, and again, you're welcome to take your uh, yoga blocks or books to help bring the floor up to you here, or you can also go prop free, it doesn't matter. Prop feet free is gonna be a little more challenging. Okay, wherever you're at, roll your shoulders back. Start to reach your heart forward. Take your gaze forward. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, feel your right hip start to melt towards the floor. Yowza. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. So again, we know why we're doing this. Starting to stretch these muscles to give yourself more space more freedom in your swing but also whether you're a golfer or not this kind of movement for your body is just good for you <laughs> all right again we'll experiment with how it feels to add a little more weight to the stretch by inhaling reaching the arms up to the sky and exhaling letting your pelvis sink down towards the floor at the same time squeeze your inner thighs together just so we're not feeling any kind of crunchiness in the lower back here we want to keep a lot of space in the chest and in the lower back beautiful take one more inhale exhale plant the hands down now swing the right foot slightly over to the right we're going to kick this left leg back, float it, or go straight into that side plank on this side. So float your left foot off of the floor as you reach your left hand up to the sky. Right fingers are spread really wide, so you've got this strong base. Again, these wobbles are not a bad thing. That's all these muscles waking up, saying hello to you. <laughs> and you can stay right here. You also have an option to have the left foot on the floor, no problem. Still working to stabilize the core. Or, if you like, bend your elbow, grab a hold of the back of your skull with your left hand, and now kick the left foot behind you, really opening through the chest. Can you lean your head back into your hand, again finding the spaciousness in the shoulder and the upper back body. And you can stay here, keep kicking your foot back behind you, keep leaning your head back. Or you can release your head with your hand and instead grab a hold of the top of your left foot as you kick the foot into your hand, find loads of space through the whole front side of your body. At the same time, opening up the shoulders, opening up this quad muscle. Beautiful, one more breath in here. And then exhale to gently release, come down nice and slow. Beautiful, and this time we're gonna slide forward onto our bellies. Ah, that's nice, though. No? <laughs> okay, I'm just going to move my blocks out of the way for a second. All right, so here we're also going to start opening up into the shoulders. So take your right arm directly out to the side, like making a bit of a T-shape. And if you know that your shoulders are way tight, then take your hand a little further down towards your hips instead of directly in line with your shoulder. All right. And now take your gaze to the left. We want to find the spidey hand with the left fingerprints, elbow pointing up. And now bend the left knee like you're in a little sleepover party. Okay, spread the right fingers wide, take an inhale. As you exhale, let's roll onto the right hip and then maybe the left toes lift and tap the floor behind you. And if they don't and this leg is floating in space and that's really uncomfortable, instead of bending the left knee, you can straighten the left leg and let your left leg just simply sit on top of your right leg. So a couple of options there for whatever you're feeling like today. But mostly this stretch is moving into our pectoral muscle, the front of our shoulder, opening up the chest. And again, option to stay exactly like this. You're doing a lot of good stuff to open your chest in this pose. Or if you want that hip flexor stretch, quad muscle stretch again, then lift the left arm up, flip the hand behind you, and see if you can reach behind for the top of your left foot. And then if you've got your foot, roll your left shoulder back, squeeze your shoulder blades together as you kick your foot into your hand. Nice, you might be using a lot of your core muscles here or not so much, just depending on how comfortable or uncomfortable this pose is in your body. 
We're here for two more breaths. You're doing such a great job. And if you went too far and you need to take it back, then please honor your body. It's no shame. One more breath. If you've got the bind of the leg, then release it now. Take the left hand back down to the floor as you roll onto your belly. Release both feet towards one another and we'll switch it to the other side. So send your left arm in line with your left shoulder or below it and then bend the right elbow and turn your head to face the right hand side. All right, find that spidey hand with your right hand. Bend the right knee now and when you're ready, we're going to roll onto the left hip either tapping the toes down behind us, if that's easy enough for you to do, or simply stacking the right leg on top of the left. So whichever feels best for you. And again here, we're opening up through the left shoulder, the left pectoral muscle, which is enough. It's totally enough to just stay exactly like this. Uh, again, if your shoulder is on fire, then shift your left hand down towards your hips rather than up towards your shoulder and if you want to add the quad stretch then send the right arm up to the sky flip the hand behind you and then see if you can reach behind for the top of your right foot beautiful kicking your foot back into your hand starting to open up these muscles that run along the front side of our legs into our hips Ooh. <laughs> make sure you drink plenty of water after this class one more breath in here. If you're all bound up, release your foot, send it down, plant your right hand as you roll onto your belly. Take both hands underneath your forehead for just a second and wiggle out your butt, almost like a dog just wagging its tail when it's happy. <laughs> and then take your hands underneath your shoulders and press yourself up onto a kneeling position. Again, if this is uncomfortable for you in any way, you can also sit either on a chair or cross-legged, whatever works for you today. All right, let's get into this neck just a little, shall we? So take the hands out to the sides, flip the hands behind you, and then bend your elbows and reach either for wrists, forearms, or elbows. Okay, roll the shoulders back and inhale, sit up really tall. Feels like the crown of your head wants to magnetize to the ceiling and at the same time get heavy in your hips. All right, take a deep breath in. And exhale, close down your eyes. Drop your chin to your chest and roll your left ear to your left shoulder. All right, and now get heavy through the right arm, the right elbow, the right shoulder. And with your eyes closed, maybe you find very gentle movements of the head and the neck until you come to your juicy spot. I'm sure you've got one. I have about 7,000. <laughs> and when you find it, stay and breathe. Try and use your breath to release the tension. Notice if you've dumped into your low back or your belly, can you just find that slight engagement in the belly again? Sorry to say everybody, but this engaged belly is sort of vital for our life. <laughs> if we want to maintain this nice, healthy spine. One more breath here. Breathe it out. Slowly tuck your chin to your chest and roll your chin back to center. Take an inhale in the center and exhale to take your right ear to your right shoulder as you draw the left shoulder down, as if your left elbow is made of lead and it's so heavy. Again, feel free here to nod your head a little yes until you find your juicy, juicy spot. Ooh, big muscles. And whether you're a golfer or not, I'm a yoga teacher and I still have a really tight neck muscles, so. I'm sorry for everyone who thinks that yoga helps your neck. I mean, it's helpful, but <laughs> life is tense, no? Take one more breath in here. Try and get rid of some of that tension with your exhale. Ugh, nice. And then roll your chin back down to center and then lift up, open your eyes, release your hands. You can give your shoulders a couple of rolls. 
Beautiful. And then in no fancy way, take your hands forward, tuck your toes, and stand up. Yay! <laughs> I want to talk for just a moment about the feet and the placement of your feet. So from what I know about golf, which is not very much, is that the stance for your swing, your putt, whatever, is really important. And I'm not sure what you've been told, but if you've been told that your toes should point in a certain direction and your legs should be a certain distance apart, I would like to share my yoga knowledge with you, which is that our skeletal structure is different in every single human being. So what feels right and comfortable for one person will feel uncomfortable and totally wrong in another body. So I'm going to ask you to be a little silly for just a second. I want you to close your eyes. No one's looking. I'm not looking. No one around you is looking. It's fine. And then I want you to start sort of bouncing. You can bend your knees and you can kind of take little jumps. You can do a little dance. You can do a little twist. Just bounce around. Get some air. <laughs> Lift yourself away from the mat. Our eyes are closed. Try not to knock over furniture or kick a cat in the head. Just bounce around, bounce around, bounce, bounce, bounce. Do a little jump and then land. And as you land, I want you to move your feet around, keeping your eyes closed. Shift the weight forward into the toes, back into the heels. You can shake out your legs. Keep your eyes closed as you keep shifting your weight around, moving side to side, forwards and backwards. Really play here, experiment, don't rush it. And then I want you to find this balanced state of stillness. Keeping your eyes closed, keep shifting the weight until you find that point in your body where you feel that your feet are completely grounded. That with your eyes closed, if someone was to come and push you over, they would have a very hard time doing it because you're so balanced in your skeletal structure. And now with your eyes closed and your feet firmly planted on the ground, I want you to open your eyes and look down at your feet. Look, I shifted all the way to the other side of my mat. So how have your feet landed? For me, my left foot is slightly forward of my right, and this is true because I have a slightly longer left leg than my right leg. And if anything, my toes are pointed out slightly more on the left side than on the right side, which means I have more external rotation in my left hip than in my right hip, possibly, right? There are other factors as well, your muscle movement, everything. But I want you to notice what, how your body feels comfortable when you're not paying attention to it. So from your Tadasana, I'm gonna move back to the center because it's just bothering me. <laughs> move back to the center of your mat if your jumping went crazy or if it bothered you. Find your, well, in yoga we call it Tadasana, but find your standing position that feels most balanced for you. And then this is what you should take into your game. Just play with it. What harm can it do? And if it totally messes with your game, then forget what I said because I'm a yoga teacher, not a golf instructor. <laughs> All right, and then here, take a little bend in your knees and then bring your arms into this cactus shape with your fingers spread really wide. Lift your elbows in line with your shoulders and pull your hands back in space so you find this lift up in your chest. At the same time here, draw the belly in in case it's kind of puffed forward. So squeeze that belly button towards your spine. And here, we're gonna move and breathe as we twist from side to side. So take an inhale, exhale, twist right, inhale, center, exhale, left. Inhale, come back to center. See if you can twist now without moving your hips. Ooh, inhale, center, exhale, left. Nice. And now we're gonna speed it up. Inhale, center, exhale, the twist. Inhale, center, and exhale, twist. And if your breath has totally gone out of whack, it's no problem. And now eliminate that movement in the middle and just sway from side to side, twisting, twisting. Keep breathing, don't forget to breathe, but you don't have to sync up your breath so intensely this time. And see if you can just twist with your upper body 
And I mean, of course, your hips are going to move, but see how much space you can create in your upper body here. Nice. Keep breathing and moving. Keep that little bend in your knees for three, two, one, and come back to center. Drop the arms. Bring them together in front of your heart space. Close down your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nose and let it out your mouth. Open your eyes. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me. Let me know how this goes. And of course, if it's your first time doing yoga, then please don't judge yourself on this class. It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice for these concepts and your body to create the freedom and strength that it needs to do some of this crazy stuff that we call yoga. Good luck on the field. I almost said field again. Good luck on the fairway. <laughs> I wish you luck with your game. Thank you for practicing with me today. Namaste.